on one side we hear that marriage is the amazing thing and you should sign the contract blindly on the other side we hear that marriage is the worst thing that you can ever do do not get married let's see in the video the pros and cons about getting married and what you should be doing if you're interested in a long-term relationship so last week i was with my friend he came from paris and we were having a little chat and he was telling me about his view on marriage and that also monogamy is always been enforced by religion and he doesn't believe in monogamy he doesn't believe in marriage and that was very interesting to see his perspective i added some elements because i think this debate is never black and white and it has to be nuanced and i presented the different argument the pros and cons it's great to have a balanced vision when it comes to marriage it's interesting to see where marriage is coming from especially marriage in the western countries it's coming from monogamy why our societies are more monogamous is for the very simple reason that if you do not have monogamy the society becomes quite dangerous the benefits of monogamous relationship are well documented for example in 2012 the university of british columbia suggested that institutionalized monogamous relationship are the bedrock of the society and basically they are reducing antisocial behavior when it comes to violence and crime and also uh, poverty similarly the nyu professor scott galloway stated that the most dangerous person in the world is a broke and non male when it comes to marriage and long-term monogamous relationship it's very important to highlight that the societies that have monogamy have improved quite a lot and have developed quite a lot in the past few centuries and they are now dominating the world most of the society that are polygamous are either extinct or uh, disappear it's very simple to understand that men that are in monogamous societies tend to be more fulfilled because they have a family a wife and as a result they don't tend to be as violent and they don't drive as much of this violent behavior to understand how the marriage has changed we have to understand where the marriage is coming from as we live in western countries these western countries are based on christian values we need to go to the origin of the marriage in order to understand it in a marriage especially as a christian marriage it's basically the union of a man and a woman in order to create a family this definition with time has evolved because of the changes of social convention in the different countries so now the definition is pretty much if you love each other get married but there are a lot of involvement with marriage it's not only the love it's not only the feelings it's much more than this it's a commitment to spend your life together and to also have a family and kids obviously the ability to have kids is different between the different couples however that was the purpose of the marriage one thing that is very important and i want to highlight in this video is that i want to differentiate the long-term commitment with someone with the contract that you sign with the state which are two different things on one side you have you want to spend your life together with someone you want to have a family together that's one part and then on the other side you have what you sign as a paper with the state a contract between the two of you not only between the two of you but also involving the state where if the contract finishes then there's a lot of repercussions on you and your family originally the marriage has always been a commitment between two people in order to create a family that involved the raising of the kids so that was a great point because as soon as you are mating and having a kid then the men will stick together to take care of the family with the woman and that's the best environment to raise the kid also that we provide what we call the sexual exclusivity meaning that people are committing to be faithful between each other for men that's very important because back in the day there was no other way to assess paternity except when it comes to exclusivity also sexual access if the woman wants to have sex then she has access to someone straight away if the woman wants to have sex similarly he can have sex with someone lastly there was an aspect of provision and protection that was involved in marriage so the man had to provide for his family and the man had to protect his family so he had to be the first one to die if you had people coming to kill their family also another point monogamous relationship is a compromise for both people it's a compromise for the man it's a compromise for the woman why 
because on one side the woman's mating strategy is hypergamy meaning that she wants to have the best man that she can have at any point the woman will always try to find the best man that she can and as a result then she will move to the higher social economic partner every single time and she will not be monogamous with the first person on the other side the man mating strategy is unlimited access to unlimited women he will want to spread as many seeds as possible in order to have the best descendants the monogamous relationship is a compromise because both of them are abandoning their mating strategy in order to have a monogamous relationship a long-term commitment so there are a lot of cons for each of the men and the women for this strategy the best result is for the kids because at the end of the day it's all about the next generation and this is why both men and women were very happy to forget their mating strategy in order to invest in a long-term relationship unfortunately today the marriage has been hijacked by the evolution of the society especially the evolution of the family court a lot of the cases now the marriage is different meaning that you don't have the same right and responsibility that you used to have for example even sexual exclusivity is not necessarily a criteria anymore a lot of lawyers that i'm talking to have told me that infidelity is probably going to fade out as a reason for divorce meaning that it's very likely that in few years infidelity will not be a fault for divorce because of the evolution of the way the society thinks and behaves similarly for child obligation what used to happen back in the day is that you would have a man having sex with a woman and they will have a kid at this point the monogamy would be socially enforced and the man had to stick and raise his kid now it's not the case there are a lot of men that are having sex with women there will be a lot of cases where the man will not want to invest any of his time into his child that's obviously not right because that causes a lot of single parents to raise their kids on their own this is driving antisocial behavior as kids from single parent household have more antisocial behaviors so when it comes to marriage and long-term relationship we cannot ignore the children kids are raised in the best environment possible when they are raised by both of their biological parents we always hear that kids need two loving parents in order to be happy in life that's not true because adopted kids do not perform as well as non-adopted kids if your kids are biological they will usually perform way better than adopted kids even though adopted kids have loving parents why is that is because they are much more than just love in the development of the kids there's a physical and biological aspect of it when you have a kid you have to think about what is the benefit for the kids and how the kids going to receive the love that you are providing to the kid a lot of people also are telling me oh the kids only need two loving parents and the question i have is why maybe not three or four or five loving parents you know biological parents there's a direct link in terms of how they're going to take care of their kids and how the kids are going to receive the love most research suggests that a kid is happier when he has male and female role models if you have a kid that is raised by his biological parents then that's great if for example you are in a single parent family for example single mom then probably this kid will need a role model on the father's side also kids coming from monogamous relationship tend to fare way better in all metrics than kids coming from polyamorous relationship so a fair contract benefits both parties today marriage punishes the party earning more money in most of the cases because of hypergamy is going to be the men earning more money if a contract rewards the party that is breaking the contract is not a great contract is it similarly for marriage because of the way the marriage contract is set up it's rewarding the party terminating the contract and we can see it in the stats today the vast majority of the divorces are initiated by women if it was a fair contract as most of the cases in market or if you have a contract in business contract it can be broken by both parties however the marriage contract is largely broken by women even in certain states the women are initiated up to 80 percent of the divorces that's quite shocking if it was a fair contract we will be looking at maybe 50 50 percent or maybe 55 45 at the moment when it's 60 40 or even 80 20 is clearly not a fair contract 
So we need to look into the details why we are getting in this situation. Okay, so what are the reasons that people mention when it comes to divorce? So the first reason that people mention is drifted apart. What does it mean? For whatever reason, you're in a long-term relationship and you're in marriage, but you feel that you are getting further away from your partner, then you can just mention, okay, we have drifted apart, and as a result, this is a good reason to get divorced. But if you think about it, normally the marriage is a long life commitment. It shouldn't be terminated because you don't feel the same way about someone. Feelings, they come and go. They always change. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch the video, how to be your real safe. The second reason mentioned by most of the divorces are lack of compatibility. You're very close maybe at the beginning because you go out, you go, go to the restaurant, you go traveling and everything is fine. But when you spend a long time with someone, you realize that you are not compatible. But compatibility is much more than just desire or even personality or hobbies. It has to come for values. If your values are not in line, then you're going to have a big issue with your partner. That's the second cause. The third cause of divorces are money issues. So a lot of the time we think that money is not a big deal, but it can create a lot of tension in the couple and relationship. If you're struggling to pay your bills, if you're struggling to make ends mean, then you're going to end up in a situation where it's going to be very stressful for the couple to pay the bills and uh, also provide everything for their family. At that point, then people are going to consider divorcing because they will think that they're going to be in a better financial situation after the divorce. But that's really lunacy because the divorce is costing so much money. And in addition, you're going to have one income instead of two. But I can understand that for some women that do not work, then that can be a good compromise. The fourth reason for divorces is infidelity. So it's very simple. Obviously, someone is stepping out of the marriage and wants to spend time with someone else and have sex with someone else. That's infidelity. It happens quite a lot and is driven by different reasons. Usually, men are more mad at their women for infidelity because of the action itself. And the women are more upset about their husband stepping out of the marriage because of the emotional cheating. So each of them have different reasons for why they are unhappy about infidelity. Obviously, infidelity is something that is quite critical in marriage. And if you're unhappy about it, then it's a good reason to get divorced. And the fifth reason is lack of intimacy. So that comes back to what I was mentioning initially. Normally, the marriage is a commitment and you have rights and obligations. And one of the obligations is sexual access. If you're not giving sexual access to your partner, if you're not sleeping with your partner, then what's the point of getting married? It's more and more common today. So you have a lot of the responsibilities, but you don't have the right associated uh, with the marriage. So recently I was discussing with a lawyer and she was telling me that she was working on the case and she was defending a client. So what happened is that the client that is a man, uh, probably in his forties earning okay money, for example, four or five K a month, he was divorcing his woman that is working with a law firm as well. But the woman was very secretive and very smart in the way she divorced the man because she hide her income. She stated to the judge that she is not working and doesn't have money. But on the other side, she could afford one of the most expensive firm ever in the UK to defend her. So that was very interesting because on one side, she managed to convince the judge that she doesn't earn money and apparently she earns a lot of money, but she's hiding her account abroad. And at the same time, she could afford the most expensive lawyer ever. And she managed to convince the judge to force the man to pay for child support, spousal support, and also paying for the house until the kids are 18. And obviously the man is earning decent money, but he's not the richest man in the UK. And obviously that's something that is terrible for the man and now he's really struggling financially. And I can understand that this is very stressful for him. It's going to be very stressful until the kids are 18. If you think about it, this is a proper car machine structure. So the man is just there to pay the bills. That's it. And he doesn't have anything else. Even after the divorce, he still has the same obligation that he had before the marriage. At the end of the day, he doesn't have much money left after paying all the bills in the world. One of the things that the judge likes to say is that the standard of living should not drop. So basically, 
the standard of living of the person earning less, which is most likely the woman, should not drop. But that's actually very interesting because the whole point of divorcing is to stop having the same commitment and the same obligations. Both people's standard of living are going to drop. And that's the whole point of the divorce. But if the judge has to enforce that one person keep the same standard of living, that's going to cause a lot of stress on the other person. So if a woman is asking, for example, I want to keep the same standard of living, I want you to pay me as much money so my standard of living is not dropping. It's like for a man saying, oh, I want to have the same sexual access as during the marriage. So I want to be able to sleep with you two times a week until I'm 45 or 50. Is that reasonable? Probably not. Similarly for women asking, okay, I want you to contribute 80% financially of all my bills. Some women will advance the argument that women get compensated during divorce because it's harder for them to remarry. That's not a very strong argument for the very simple reason that for men, it's harder to get married and to find a partner earlier when it is in their young years. Are they going to be compensated for it? Not really. So why would a woman get compensated when she divorces and it's harder for her to remarry? Another important aspect is that even if you're not the biological dad, there's a risk involved in getting in a long-term relationship with a woman. For example, the New York Law Firm website indicates that if you are helping to support a child that is not yours, be careful. Should your relationship with the mother end, you might be forced to make involuntary child support payments even if you are not the biological father of the child. So be careful with who you are long-term relationship with.